These problems that we're now going to factor are ones where we have a trinomial, but the number in front of the x squared is not a one. So in the past, you might've seen problems where they're factored by looking for factors of the last number that add up to the middle number. Well, that's not going to work here because it only is that there's a one in front of the x squared. So instead, we're going to solve this one by using what's referred to as the AC method, or it's also referred to as factoring by grouping. What that involves is you're going to multiply the first number by the last number, and then that's the number we're going to get the factors for that add up to 23. Okay, the first number is sometimes referred to as A, and the last number would be a C, so that's why it's called the AC method. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 6 times 20, and I'm going to get 120. So now I want to look for two numbers that multiply to make 120, but add to be 23. So I need to go and make a list of all the different factors. As soon as I find one that works, that adds to 23, then I'm going to go ahead and I can stop there. So I have 1 and 120. I have 2 and 60, 3 and 40. So far, none of these add up to 23, so I'll keep going. So I have four and 30. I have five and 24, that doesn't work. I have six and 20. 120, I can't divide it by seven. Then I have eight, I have eight and 15, 10 and, tw and 12. So the one that works here, it would be eight and 15 because eight plus 15 gives me 23. So now I know that that is the pair that I need to use. However, we're not going to just go ahead and put these directly into the parentheses and do X plus eight and X plus 15. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the middle term as these two numbers. What I mean by that is I'm going to put six X squared and I have plus 8x plus 15x plus 20. So what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of the 23 and I'm rewriting it as these two factors. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you put first. I could have done 15x plus 8. doesn't matter. Okay. But I put uh, by doing that, it can simplify always back to 23. So we're not changing the problem at all. By doing that, we're just rewriting the middle term as these factors. Now we're going to use factoring by grouping. We're going to factor the first two terms and factor the second two terms. The first two terms, if I factor, I want to look for the, uh, the common factor between these is going to be a two. That's the largest number that divides into six and eight. So there's a two and also the lowest power of X. So I have two X. What goes in the parentheses, I'm going to take six X squared divided by two X and I'll get a three X. 8x, 8x divided by 2x is a plus 4. Now I want to do the same thing for the second two terms. I want to look for the common factor, which is going to be a 5. And I want to divide each of these by a 5. So 15x divided by 5 is 3x. 20 divided by 5 is a 4. Notice that I now have a repeated term here. 3x plus 4 would now be a common factor that I can pull out. The one that repeats, I'm just going to put that out here one time. If you got rid of both of these and these weren't here anymore, you would have 2x plus 5 left over. And that's what you're going to put right here, 2x plus 5. So now if I multiply this, I should get the same thing I started with. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. I would have a 3x times 5 would be a 15x, and then I would have plus an 8x. 15 plus 8 would give me the 23x here, and 4 times 5 is 20. So that's how I know I factored it correctly, because I multiplied it out, and that's what I got as a result. So let's do a couple more examples with that. I have 2 and I have 35. I want to multiply these things together. So 2 times 35 is 70. Now I want to look for two numbers that multiply to make 70, but add to be negative 19. Now, since the middle term is negative, 
that means that the factors I find are both going to have to be negative because we know a negative times a negative is positive 70. And then the two negatives will add together to equal the negative we have in the middle. So let's run through the list with 70. I have one and 70. I have two and 35. Three doesn't go on there. Four doesn't go on there. I have five and 14 and I have seven and 10. These are all the different numbers that multiply to make uh, 70. Now, of course, I know that each of these are going to have to be negative, but I want to find the pair that allows me to have it add up to 19. And the only one that would work would be this right here, 5 and 14. Well, both of those, if I make them negative, negative 5 times negative 14 is positive 70. But if I add those, negative 5 minus 14, I get negative 19. So now I know that's the pair I want. So we're going to rewrite the, the negative 19 and rewrite it as negative 5x and negative 17x. Again, the order does not matter which one of those I write. Okay, so I'm going to do, in fact, this one, let's just go ahead and, and switch the order. You don't have to, we don't have to do that, but I'm going to on this problem just to show you that it actually doesn't matter which way you do that, you'll still get the same answer. Now the first two, the common factor here will be a two and also an X is common. So I'm gonna factor a two X out of just the first two terms. Two X squared divided by two X is X. Negative 14 X divided by two X is negative seven. Now for these, if the third term is negative, then you wanna factor out the negative also. So I wanna factor out negative five from this. Now, the reason why is because you're trying to get these two parentheses parts to match. So the only way you're going to get a positive X here is if you factor out a negative five. That's why we want to take the negative out. Negative five X divided by negative five is positive X like we want, but 35 positive 35 divided by negative five is a negative seven. So now we see that that term is repeated. We now want to factor out the common factor Factoring out X minus seven. Now, if I get rid of both of those, whatever's left over is what goes inside the parentheses here. It's two X minus five. That's gonna be uh, fully factored. Let's try one more. Okay, so what we have this here, we wanna multiply the 15 times two and we get 30. We wanna find numbers that multiply to make 30 now, again, since the middle term is negative, I'll have my two numbers are going to end up being negative here. So I have one and 30. I have two and 15. I have three and 10. Four doesn't work, but I have five and I have five and six. So five and six is the combination I want. If I make both of these negative, then that's going to work. Negative five times negative six is negative 30. But if I add them together, I get negative 11, okay? So let's go ahead and write this out again. I'm gonna re rewrite this one. Instead of the negative 11x, I'm gonna use these terms here. So I'm gonna do a minus 5x, minus 6x. Again, the order does not matter in which you write those. Now that we have that, we're gonna factor the first two and the second two. We're factoring by grouping here. So we have to factor the first two and the second two. The first two, a five and an X would be the common factor of those. 15 X squared divided by five X is gonna be a three X. Negative five X divided by five X would be a negative one I would have there. The third term is negative. So I do wanna factor out a negative and it's gonna be a two that's gonna be a common factor with both of those that we have. Negative six X divided by negative two is a positive three X. Positive two divided by negative two is negative one. What I have here, I'm gonna do the, the one that repeats. I'm going to pull that one out. If I got rid of these parentheses parts, the only thing that's left is a five X minus two, and that would be my second factor. Again, you can always multiply this out to make sure you get the same thing that you started with.